Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. Winston Churchill was speaking of the Battle of Britain, which happened almost 80 years ago, as Hitler attempted to pound this small island into submission. Here in Duxford is a part of the Imperial War Museum that deals with aviation. It's Britain's largest aviation museum, housing large exhibits, including nearly 200 aircraft, as well as the paraphernalia of war, like military vehicles and artillery, in seven main exhibition buildings. But it's not just a place where one can view aeroplanes, it's a place where we can see history. It's indeed a memorial that serves to focus our memory on something so significant that life is only as it is here now because of what happened here back then. When British, American and Allied pilots fought a common enemy. Today it's difficult to imagine what they went through as they literally fought for their lives in the Battle of Britain. Perhaps it should be said they fought for our lives also. In 1940, it was defense that was the focus. Hitler had decided that the way to gain victory was to literally drop hundreds of thousands of bombs on non-military targets, beginning in Rotterdam, Holland, where the city was actually raised to the ground. Certainly a tactic that severely backfired because the Allies responded by bombing German non-military targets, resulting in the destruction of many German cities by the end of the war. Bombing missions by the iconic Lancaster bombers being the response of the British the men who fought are commemorated here. Buildings preserved. They even have a captured doodlebug on its launch pad that terrorized London. This building houses many historic aircraft. The guides are excellent, giving insight into the exhibits and the part they played in times past, and answering our questions. The original main building, the Operations Building, is a fascinating part of the museum. Inside is insight into what happened right here. This is the actual operations room, complete with telephones, switchboard, and map, and a large table with a huge map of southeastern England with markers showing where enemy aircraft were at any given time information being telephoned in by observers all over the south of England. Hello, Hello Carolina, Receiving you loud and clear. Are you receiving me? Over. Yes, I'm looking at the clock. Yes, I've read it. It's 11 o'clock. Like the rate is coming our way. One of the amazing sights here is to see actual World War II aircraft in the air. Mike and Elizabeth, my good friends, are my guides today, and we walked over to see the Spitfire, the iconic British fighter plane. It cost £2,750, that's $3,600, for a 30-minute flight.
there's a simulator at a fraction of the price. Here comes Sally B, Boeing B-17G Flying Fortress, the Memphis Bell. A beautiful tiger moth is taking off. And Sally B is coming in. The Spitfire getting airborne. Majestic. There's something about the shape of a Spitfire. It's the Jaguar of aeroplanes. Then a totally different experience. It happened 2nd of March, 1969. 50 years ago, the airlines went supersonic. And it's here, 38 feet high, a wingspan of 89 feet, and 193 feet long. And we get to see inside. The verdict? Small. Nay, tiny. There's more room in a joy. What's a joy, you might ask? I'll show you one in a minute. In the meantime, Mike and Elizabeth are enjoying the experience. We even get to see the cockpit. A very interesting look at this now historic relic of the 60s. We then walk over to see the commercial aircraft. As an aviation museum, it also gives us the opportunity to see how things have changed in the last 50 years. When I remember my first jet flight, I hopped on a Trident jet and flew to Switzerland. Happy that it was not a comet, the world's first commercial jet airliner which had a bad reputation. Did you know women drivers are better than men? So this is a joy. I've even sat next to the pilot a couple of times flying this in the Channel Islands. I can tell you a few stories about this plane. Finally, the Vickers VC-10, the plane that brought me to Hong Kong for the first time, with its whale-like tail. What a delightful day we've had. This is a great place to visit.